Hello humans. Today I'm going to teach you one of the biggest time savers you'll see throughout your entire career, and that's loops. In this tutorial, we'll go over the while loop and the length function. Loops, at their core, just repeat a set of actions over and over and over again until some condition becomes false. Let's imagine you're in my kitchen and I have some potatoes in a bowl. Well, I would pick up a potato, peel it, and move on. Then I'd grab the next potato, peel it, and move on. I'd keep repeating this while there were potatoes in the bowl. In other words, while there are potatoes in my bowl, I will pick one up, peel it, and repeat. This is what loops are. While our condition, if there are potatoes in my bowl, is true, I repeat picking up a potato and peeling it. And I keep repeating this until there are no more potatoes in my bowl. Modeling our potato example, we have potatoes in bowl, and let's say I have three. So, while there are potatoes in my bowl, while the number of potatoes in my bowl is greater than zero, I want to do several actions. To start, I grab a potato, which means I'll have one less in my bowl. So, potatoes in bowl will decrease by one. We tell Python this by saying, the new value of potatoes in bowl is equal to the old value minus one. I'm going from three potatoes to two potatoes. I'm going to peel it, and I'll represent this by printing peeling potato. I'll then print remaining potatoes in bowl, followed by the string equivalent of potatoes in bowl. Then I'll type an empty print statement. This gives us a blank line every time our loop runs, and it will make our output a little bit easier to read. Let's run this and step through the results. We see that we peel a potato and print the number of remaining potatoes, and we do this over and over until there are zero remaining potatoes in our bowl. Once we reach that point, we stop our loop. Looking at our code, we create potatoes in bowl and enter our loop. We ask, are there potatoes in my bowl? Yep, we have three potatoes, so the code in our while block will run. The actions that belong to our while loop will execute. Meaning, we pick up a potato, which is represented by decreasing potatoes in bowl, we print peeling potato, and state that we have two potatoes left. We print our blank line, and that puts us at the end of our loop. Then, we check our condition again. Are there still more than zero potatoes in my bowl? Yes, so we repeat our while block. We decrease potatoes in bowl, we print peeling potato, and the number of remaining potatoes, followed by a blank line. We reach the end of our loop, so we check again. Are there still potatoes in my bowl? Yes, we have one left, so our condition is met. We once again decrease potatoes in bowl, print peeling potato, print that we have zero remaining potatoes, and print our blank line. Since we are out of potatoes, our condition fails this time. Our loop ends. Well, what if we had a condition that is always true? If our condition is while one is equal to one, then that condition is always met. This gives us an infinite loop. If I were to run this, Python would work as fast as it could to execute all the code within my while block over and over and over again. Since our condition never fails, our loop never stops. For beginners, you want to avoid infinite loops, but later on you'll see that they do have their niche uses. If you make one on accident, which happens to all of us, just close your console. Depending on your IDE, you might need to press Control C, C as in Charlie, or Control Z, Z as in Zebra. Let's use a while loop to interact with a list. I'll make a list of five different types of potatoes. I'm going to write a while loop that prints out all five of these types. I'm going to make a counter, which will keep track of which potato I'm on, and that starts at zero. While my counter is less than five, I want to print something out of that list, types of potatoes, at an index of counter. After we print that, we'll give counter a new value, which is equal to its old value plus one. Let's run this and step through our code. We create our list and counter, and then we ask, is counter less than five? It is, so we print whatever is at index counter in types of potatoes. Currently, counter is zero, 
which means we print whatever is at index 0 in types of potatoes, which in this case is russet. We increase counter by 1 and check our condition. Counter is still less than 5, so our loop repeats. We print whatever is at index 1, which is Yukon gold, and again increase counter. We repeat this over and over until our counter reaches 5. At that point, counter is not less than 5, so our condition fails and our loop ends. This is exactly what we want, because at this point, all of the potatoes in our list have been printed out. But what happens if I were to delete fingerling? Running this gives us an index error. We get this because when our loop is on its final run through, we try to print whatever is at index 4 within types of potatoes. But we just deleted the potato at index 4, so Python is confused. We're asking it to print out something that no longer exists. Well, we could change our condition to be while counter is less than 4, but if I add or delete another type of potato, I'll have to change my condition again. Here is where the length function comes in. I'll change my condition to while counter is less than the length of the list types of potatoes. When the length function receives a list, it will return a number that is equal to the number of items within that list. Currently, we have four types of potatoes, so the length of types of potatoes is four. That also happens to be the exact number we needed for our loop to go all the way through our list. So let's run this and see what happens. Our error is gone and we see every potato type from our list. Now here's the strength of the length function. I'll add fingerling back and run my code without changing our condition and boom. Our loop prints out everything, including fingerling. Now our loop will dynamically print everything in our list regardless of how many items we add or take away. Length has a few other uses, such as identifying the length of a string, but working with lists is by far the most relevant. But that's it for this one. Thanks for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. It helps more than you know. But regardless, I will see you in the next one.